in today's lecture we will be discussing discrete numeric functions. A discrete numeric function is a function from the set of natural numbers which consists of 0, 1, 2 and so on to the set of real numbers. Let us write the definition somewhat formally. Let capital N be the set of natural numbers that is n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and let r be the set of real numbers any function f from n to R is said to be a discrete numeric function is said to be a discrete numeric function. In practice, we do not write discrete numeric functions as uh, usual functions. What we do instead is that we write them as sequences. So, uh, let us start with the function f. What we can do is that we can evaluate it at all possible points of the domain that is the set of natural numbers and write the sequence of the results. So, when I evaluate f at 0, I get f 0 then I evaluate it at 1, so I get f 1, then I get evaluate it at 2, so I get f 2 and so on I go on and somewhere much later I will evaluate it at some r, so I will write f r and go on like that and we can put this sequence inside the first brackets. Uh, to uh, de delineate their 
beginning and end. It is to be understood that these are essentially infinite sequences. Then somebody may ask, ask me that since it is infinite, why are we writing like that, like this one. Now, the answer is that although they are infinite, I should have a way of obtaining the expression for the rth element in finite time, no matter how large the uh, element r is or how long we take to compute the value of uh, 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 value of um, f r. The, the most important fact is that the computation time has to be finite no matter how large. Now, again in practice we have a, a more convenient way of writing a discrete numeric function. We will denote a discrete numeric function by a symbol let us say a which will be typically a lower case letter in the alphabet. So, a b c d, but when in print we will be writing bold face bold face lower case a bold face lower case b and so on and when we are writing uh, by hand then we will write a and put a uh, underline uh, to uh, to specify that this is a uh, discrete numeric function now this a is a sequence whose elements are given as a 0, then a 1, then a 2, then a 3 and so on. The general element is given as a r and so on and we close the bracket. Now, we shall be doing this for uh, other letters as well like lower case b bold face or b with an underline and so on. So, these are discrete numeric functions for us and in other contexts these are also known as sequences. So, we could also say that A uh, is a sequence of numbers A 0, A 1, A 2 whose the general term is given as A R. Now, let us look at a look at an example. Consider the sequence A let Now, this is something that we will be uh, doing typically uh, over and over again 
in this lecture we will say that suppose a is a discrete numeric function and it is defined by a r equal to let us say an expression in r and then we will write for all r greater than or equal to 0. Well, we implicitly understand that a r is the rth element of a and r starts from 0. So, we have uh, elements a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3 and so on, a r and so on and r will keep on increase, uh, increasing over the set of natural numbers. So, suppose I would like to know the first few elements of this discrete numeric sequence, uh, discrete numeric function then uh, I take the first element that is a 0 and that is 7 times 0 square plus 1 which is equal to 1. Then the second element that is a 1 this is 7 times 1 square plus 1 which is equal to 7 plus 1 which is equal to 8. Then the third element a 2 is 7 times 2 square that is 4 plus 1 and this is equal to 29 and we can keep on evaluating like this. At this point we note that discrete numeric functions may not be de defined by a single formula. It is also possible that these functions are different uh, are defined by different formulas over different regions in the domain. So, let us take an example. Now, here I denote the discrete numeric function by d let d underline discrete numeric function defined by d r equal to now see d r equal to 2 plus r for 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 5 d r equal to 2 minus r for r greater than 5 and r odd and d r equal to 2 by r for r greater than 5 and r even. So, we have got uh, three regions, one region is between 0 and 5 inclusive of 0 and 5 and in which d r is 2 plus r. If we would like to compute d r for these r's then we can start with d 0 which gives me 2 and then d 1 which gives me 3 then d 2 gives us 4 d 3 gives us 5 d 4 gives us 6 and d 6 sorry d 5 which gives us 7 and we have to stop here because we have come to r equal to 5 when 
r is greater than 5 and r is even. So, that is the case now d 6, 6 is even and greater than 5, then it is 2 by 6. So, it is one third and d 7, this is 2 minus 7. So, it is minus 5 d 8, this is 2 by 8. So, we will have 1 by 4 and d 9, this is 2 minus 9. So, it is equal to minus 7. In this way, we can compute first few elements of the discrete numeric function that we have defined. Now, we will, we will come to uh, uh, manipulation of discrete numeric functions. What we see here is that we, if we have several discrete numeric functions, then we can add, multiply or subtract them with one another and also we can have the ideas of multiplying some scalars to these discrete numeric functions. By scalars we mean real numbers. We will also see that we can do some other operations on these discrete numeric functions, but first we start with addition. Suppose A and B are two discrete numeric functions. So, A is given by a 0, a 1, a 2, so on up to a r and so onward. B is given by b 0, b 1, b 2, so on b r and onward. A plus b equal to c is also a discrete numeric function defined as C r equal to A r plus B r for all r greater than or equal to 0. Thus, in short, if we have two discrete numeric functions and we add them element wise that is add the first element with the first element, second element with the second element, third with the third and in general rth with the rth, then 
we obtain another discrete numeric function which is called the sum of the first two discrete numeric functions. Next we define multiplication this multiplication is also term wise. So, I write in short c equal to a dot b is defined by c r equal to a r dot b r for all r greater than or equal to 0. So, this is the multiplication. Next we define scalar multiplication. Now, by a scalar we will mean any element from the set real set of real uh, numbers. So, that is any element in R is called a scalar. So, let alpha be an element in R alpha is called a scalar alpha times a is equal to c is a discrete numeric function defined by C r equal to alpha times a r for all r greater than or equal to 0. So, this means that if we take a real number and multiply each element of the discrete numeric function by that scalar number and obtain a discrete numeric function. <coughs> then that discrete numeric function that we obtain is called a scalar multiplication of the original function by the chosen real number. We can also define absolute value of a discrete numeric function. here take a discrete numeric function a bar c equal to absolute value of a bar is defined by C r equal to absolute value of a r for all r greater than or equal to 0. Now, we will go over to some examples. Example 
we take two discrete numeric functions one is given by a r equal to 0 when 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 2 and 2 to the power minus r plus 5 when r is greater than or equal to 3 and b r this is equal to 3 minus 2 to the power r for 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 1 and r plus 2 for r greater than or equal to 2. Now, suppose we are interested in checking the sum of these two discrete numeric functions, we have to compute the value of a r plus b r for all r. Now, a r plus b r when r equal to 0 and 1 gives us the value 3 minus 2 to the power r. This is when r is between 0 and 1. Now, when r is equal to 2, then a r is still 0, but b r is r plus 2, but r is equal to 2. So, we get 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. For r greater than or equal to 3, this uh, the sum will be 2 to the power minus r plus r plus 7. So, a r plus b r if we write as c r then the corresponding sequence c is the sum of the functions a and b. As I have told before, I will be using the word sequence and discrete numeric functions interchangeably from time to time. Now, if you would like to know the product of these two numeric functions, we will note that a r is uh, 0 for r equal to 0, 1 and 2. So, the product a r into b r is going to be 0 for r greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2. And then when r is greater than or equal to 3, the product a r dot b r is equal to 2 to the power minus r plus 5 into r plus 2 which gives us r into 2 to the power minus r plus 2 to the power minus r plus 1 plus 5 r plus 2. So, in short c is a dot b 
where C r is defined as 0 when r is between 0 and 2 r 2 to the power minus r plus 2 to the power minus r plus 1 plus 5 r plus 2 for r greater than or equal to 3. The next example is on absolute values for this we consider the discrete numeric function a r given by minus 1 raise to the power r into 2 by let us say r plus 1 for r greater than or equal to 0. Now, see if I put r equal to 0, so a 0 is 2 by 1 equal uh, 2 by 1, so it is 2 a 1 equal to minus of 2 by 2 which is minus 1, then a 2 is minus 1 raised to the power 2 2 by 3. So, I have got 2 by 3 and a 3 is equal to minus 1 cube 2 by 4. So, it is minus of half and so on. Now, the absolute value of a r is simply 2 by r plus 1 for all r greater than or equal to 0 and if we define C r equal to absolute value of a r for r greater than or equal to 0, then the discrete numeric function C is called the absolute value of a. So, we have defined addition, multiplication, scalar multiplication and then absolute value operation on discrete numeric functions. Now, we will define some other operations on discrete numeric functions uh, which are called shift operations. Now, we will be uh, denoting a shift operation by S. S The question is what does it do? We take a discrete numeric function a which is given by a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3 so on, then we have a r and so on. If I apply s on a I get a discrete numeric function which is called S A and which is simply 0, A 0, A 1, A 2 and so on. If I apply S again, I get S square A which is a discrete numeric function gi given by 0, 0, a 0, a 1, a 2 and so on. So, the net effect is that S shifts the whole sequence of the values of discrete numeric function by one position 
a square shift by 2 positions and so on. So, I can think about S i, S i a is 0, 0, so on up to 0 i positions and then I have got a 0, a 1, a 2 and so on. So, if we would like to write down formally, then we will write that S i a is a discrete numeric function let us say b such that b i is equal to uh, sorry not b i, but I should write b r b r equal to 0 for how many positions when r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to i and then b r is equal to a r minus i for r greater than or equal to i here I instead of i we will have i minus 1 because 0 to i minus 1 gives me uh, i positions. So, we could also call it a right shift operation. In the same manner, we can define a left shift operation which we will be writing in this way. We take S and then we write S inverse. So, this, this S inverse does something just opposite to S. When it gets applied to A, then we get a 1, a 2, a 3 and so on. If I apply s to the power minus 2 to a, then I will get a 2, a 3 and so on and similarly. So, if I apply s to the power minus i to a, then my sequence will start from a i a i plus 1 and so on. So, we will write that the discrete numeric function b corresponding to s to the power minus i of a is defined by b i equal to a of r again I am sorry it will be b r b r equal to a r plus i. So, let us check what happens. So, suppose I take b 0, b 0 what is it? It is a 0 plus i is a i. So, this is the first element of S 
to the power minus i a and indeed it is so these are equal. Then if I take r equal to this is for r equal to 0 if I take r equal to 1 then I have got b 1 which is equal to a 1 plus i which is again same as the second element. So, like this we will get all the elements of the shifted sequence and of course, we will lose the first i elements. Now, let us look at some examples of this shifting operation. Now, we take a discrete numeric function a r given by 1 if 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 10 and 2 if r is greater than or equal to 11 and suppose we would like to know the discrete numeric function b given by s to the power 5 of a. Then as I have defined earlier b r is equal to 0 for 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to i minus 1. So, it is 5 minus 1 which is 4 and then it is a r minus 5 for r greater than or equal to 5. Now, we have to see what happens to a r minus 5. So, if r equal to 5 a r minus 5 is a 0 which is equal to 1. Now, if r equal to 15 a r minus 5 equal to a 10 which is equal to 1 here we have to note that according to the definition of a r first 11 values of a r is 1 and that is corresponding to r equal to 5 to r equal to 15 and when r is greater than or equal to 16 it is going to be 2. So, we can write b r more um, explicitly as 0 when 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 4 is 1 when r is greater than or equal to 5 and less than or equal to 15 and 2 when r is greater than or equal to 16. So, these are the ways to write. Now, if somebody tells me to uh, take the other way round like take probably s to the power minus 7 of a let us see whether we can solve that problem. We recall again our discrete numeric function which is a r given by 1 when 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 10 and 2 when 11 less than or equal to r that is r greater than or equal to 11. Now, suppose somebody tells me to find out s minus 7 of a it is of course, a discrete numeric function b defined by b 
B R which is equal to A R plus seven for R greater than or equal to zero. So, what what happens in this case? Suppose R equal to zero, then we get A seven. Now, what is A seven? A seven is one. R equal to one, we get A eight. A eight is one. R equal to two, we get A nine. A nine equal to one. R equal to three, we get A ten. A ten equal to one. R equal to four, we get a eleven, which is equal to two, and so on. We will get keep on getting two after after this. So I can write B R as one for zero less than or equal to R less than or equal to three, and two when R greater than or equal to four. So this is a sequence. Shifted by seven to the power minus uh, s to the power minus seven. Now we come to a pair of very typical operations on discrete numeric functions. The first one is called the forward difference. Forward difference. The second one is called backward difference. So, for the beginning, let us start with the forward difference. Let a be a discrete numeric sequence, be a discrete numeric function or a sequence whatever the forward difference is a discrete numeric function defined by the forward difference of a denoted by capital delta of A is a discrete numeric function defined by rth element of this function is a r plus 1 minus a r and that is why it is called the forward difference and this is for all r greater than or equal to 0. Why forward? The reason is that if you check the sequence 
values a 0, a 1, a 2, so on, a r, then a r plus 1 and so on. So, come to the first position, I am looking forward, I am looking forward and checking how much increment happens in the forward direction. So, I am writing a 1 minus a 0 in the first place. In the second position again I am looking forward, I am writing a 2 minus a 1 and at the rs position I am again looking forward and I am writing a r plus 1 minus a r that is why it is called the forward difference. The backward difference is when we look backward, uh, so it is like this, we again start with a discrete numeric function a starts from a 0, a 1, a 2, a r, a r plus 1 and we insert a r minus 1 before a r and so on because we have to look backward now. Now, when I come to the first position, come to the first position, I look backward there is nothing, I write 0. When I come to the second position, I look backward, I find a 0, so I write a 1 minus a 0. When I come to the third position that is a position corresponding to a 2, I look backward, I see a 1, so I write the difference a 1 minus a 2 and so on. So, here we will write the backward difference as this, and it is defined by the 0th position it is 0 and from 1 onward it is a r minus a r minus 1 for r greater than or equal to 1. And this is the backward difference. So, if we start with with a uh, with a uh, forward difference sorry if we start with a backward difference the sequence will look like this this is a backward difference the first one is 0 then the second one is a 1 minus a 0, the third one is a 2 minus a 1, we go on like this, then we find a r minus a r minus 1 and after that if we venture forward, we will find a r plus 1 minus a r and so on. If we apply S inverse on this, S inverse will shift one step to the left, I will get the sequence a 1 minus a 0 in the 0 th position, a 2 minus a 1 in the first position a 3 minus a 2 in the second position and 
a r plus 1 minus a r in the rth position and so on and just a brief recall of what we defined just before in the name of forward difference we see that this discrete numeric function is nothing but the forward difference. So, this is nothing but this therefore, we have a nice relationship between forward difference and backward difference as this. In this lecture, we have first discussed the definition of discrete numeric functions. We have also shown the connection between discrete numeric functions and sequences of real numbers. Second, we have studied some manipulations of discrete numeric functions. we have checked addition, multiplication scalar multiplication and taking absolute value. Then we have checked shift operations, which are going to be very important in the context of discrete numeric functions. Shift operations. And lastly, we have checked the forward difference and backward difference. and a relationship which connects the forward difference with the backward difference through the shift operation which is this this is one left shift of the backward difference gives me forward difference. This is all for this lecture, thank you.